excited to talk to you today about predicting demographics using millions and millions of images. And this is a project with my advisor, Fei-Fei Li at Stanford, and a lot of people at many different institutions. I can't name all of them. Um, so the motivation for our project is basically that there are many government and non-government institutions that use costly methods of gathering data, right? So the US Census um, spends about $1 billion a year trying to figure out the demographic makeup of its constituents. Um, pollsters are taking surveys trying to figure out who's going to win the next presidential election. And what I want to do today is I want to convince you that using one uh, source of data, Google Street View Images, and computer vision techniques, we can infer most of this information. So what we did is we analyzed all the cars in 15 million Google Street View images, and we used the characteristics of the cars that we analyzed to then predict demographic characteristics. And so people ask, why cars? Well, cars tell you a lot about the people who own them or drive them. For example, if I told you that I drove a Toyota Prius, which I don't, but if I told you that, then you might guess that you know, I might be from San Francisco, I might be an environmentalist, et cetera. Um, so here's an overview of our pipeline. So we first built a crawler to crawl uh, 200 of the most populous uh, cities in the US and get 50 million Google Street View images from them. Sorry, Google. And then we built a, a crowdsourcing pipeline to uh, build a visual data set of cars. And then we built a fine-grained image recognition pipeline to use uh, the visual data set of cars and recognize all the cars in Google Street View images. So we first localize cars using something called deformable parts model. And we do this in two weeks using 200 CPUs. And then we uh, classify cars into one of 2,600 types of cars using convolutional neural networks. And so we analyzed about 8% of the uh, auto automobiles in the US. And so what have we learned? Um, we have learned a lot of stuff that's inferred by many government and non-government institutions, right? So for example, we learned that Burlington, Vermont is the greenest city in the US. This is data that gathered by the EPA. We learned that Chicago has the highest level of income segregation. Um, so you can look at the cars here. Red are very expensive cars, and they lie in wealthy neighborhoods and that Jacksonville is the least segregated city in the US. We can map out uh, voting uh, patterns in the US, and we can do this at the precinct level as well. Um, so here are examples at the precinct level. We can do fun things, like we can say, what car attributes are highly correlated with Democrats or Republicans? Well, trucks turn, turn out to be pretty highly correlated with Republicans. Um, and we can say, oh, given you're in a, a place where there's more trucks than um, sedans, so like, what's the likelihood, posterior probability of voting for you know, Democrat versus not, and that's pretty high. Um, we can, uh, I'm just going to give you more examples. We can um, predict the, dem uh, the racial makeup of cities, like here's an example in um, Seattle. Um, we can predict crime rates. Um, so, and then you can say the same thing, like what are the car attributes most highly correlated with crime? Well, if you see vans, be careful. Um, <laughs> I'm just saying. And so then we can, uh, we can do this across time. We can do this analysis across time. You can see um, time-lapse images of Brooklyn 2007 versus 2014, and you can see how it's totally changed economically. And you can see the opposite has happened in Detroit. So the question is, can we predict this change before the data is available? And these, this is preliminary unpublished results. And you can see an example of the change in the percentage of high school educated people in New York. And so red means it's decreased, blue means it's increased. So I hope I've convinced you that you know, we can do socially impactful visual data mining. And the more and more self-driving cars we have, the more and more sensors we have, the more and more visual data that we have. And what we hope to do is give researchers and policymakers the tools to be able to um, extract meaningful insights from, these, from this visual data so that they can make informed decisions. Thank you. Fantastic. Well oh. done. And if you want to bother me or see more stuff, you can yeah. go to the website. Questions? Who's ready to kick off questions? Wow. OK, yeah. There's a mic right here. Where's the closest mic? OK, Rudina, go ahead. So talking about how do you, how do you monetize? Right here. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Um, how do you monetize it? So um... yes, yeah, so I think that there are a few ways. Right now, I'm a researcher, so I, I'm, I'm doing research. But I think that maybe we can be you know, um, customers of like Planet Labs, where we use their data, and some other company can come, and they want to 
learn about something like where should I you know, build my new restaurant or business or something like that. A researcher wants to study uh, like education or something like that. So then we could be the company that uses this visual data to gain the insights and give it to them. Yep. And then here. Yes. Let's try it again. Um, some of the information that you showed, I'm pretty sure you could also get perhaps even more accurate results using, uh, if you just consult demographic information or statistics, it, do you think there are some insights that you could get, well, that will be unavailable from other sources of data that's available currently? Mm -hmm. So there's two things. One is the last, especially the last thing that I showed you, is that uh, the hope is to try and get this information before demographic data is available. So the census is available every you know, five years per certain like, census tract level every year for like large, large districts. And what we want to do is we want to be able to get this information faster before census data is available. And another thing I want to tell you is that the reason I wanted to show you all of these different examples was to show you an example of like using this one source of data, we're able to infer stuff that like there's so many different government inf institutions that try to infer things like like so you have EPA that's trying to figure out you know environmental stuff you have people that's, that are trying to figure out crime you have like voting people that are trying to figure out voting patterns and what we want to do is show that you have just images and you can infer this information but uh, sorry to answer your last question you can gain insights like um, somehow a lot of a lot of car companies for example are interested in this because they want to, they want to figure out what, what, you know, what type of demographic wants to buy this type of car, et cetera, et cetera. Um. Okay. Anybody else have a question? Ira, there's a mic to your right. Adrian's hanging out with it. Um, so two questions. One is, did you f so, um, did you find out find out something that is super surprising? I mean, some, yeah. like, those things, some of those things are expected, like. Vans? I, so I did not expect the Vans thing. Mm. That was totally surprising to me. Um, um, Burlington, Vermont, yes, once I saw the EPA data, that was like, oh, yeah, I, I guess it's true. But when I first saw the data, I was like, this is totally wrong. I don't know anything about Burlington, Vermont. This was pre-Bernie Sanders. I didn't know much about <laughs> Burlington, Vermont. So for me, like, it was a lot of the stuff I saw was pretty interesting. Um, for example, I, other stuff I didn't show here, the relationship between different races and cars, like black people and Cadillacs, Toyota and Asians, white people and SUVs, et cetera, et cetera. That was interesting stuff to me. Um, yeah, yeah, interesting. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, stuff I didn't know. Like later on when you read, you have to corroborate all of this stuff if you want to write papers, right? So later on when I'm like reading market research data or whatever, whatever, it's, it's corroborated. But initially, I didn't know that any of this. Trucks and Republicans, I didn't know uh, that this was a real thing. I knew it was a stereotype, <laughs> but I didn't know it was a thing. You could also use it for like democrat democratization of those uh, type of results. Yeah, because uh, people, people pay money for these types of results, right? OK, so, one last quick question. My, yeah, oh yeah. So what is the after cars, what is your next training, like a test data? Uh, so I'm graduating. Uh, so whoever, <laughs> so cars <laughs> took a while, but but um, the point is that you can you know you can cars is a proof of concept for me. You can use let's say you want to study the relationship between people's health in a particular neighborhood and the species of trees in that neighborhood, right? You can use um, images and search. Use where is search? Oh, you. Uh, he, he he you know uses uh, birds to study. Um, like bird migration patterns and stuff like that, um, and buildings, people, clothes. There's a lot of information in there. Quick last question, Rui. Hi. Actually, I had a question on similar lines, but, but I'll just switch it here a little bit. Why do you pick cars? I mean, people don't change their ownership of cars. It's like, you know, journey, I think, average like four, five, six years, and some mm -hmm. cars stay for like 12 years. Um, um, that is true. People, uh, people might not change their own ownership of cars, but when a neighborhood is changing, you often see the cars there changing, right? Like, so if you know, I all of a sudden I see a lot of Teslas in in Palo Alto. I didn't see Teslas like a while back. That tells me something. Um, I think out of all the things I can see in in a in a in a street view scene, I, in my opinion, cars are the most dynamic. I, I can't really think of. Many, you can maybe look at like signs of shops or something like that. But I think cars are the most dynamic 
in my opinion. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Round of applause, folks. <laughs> <laughs>